So let's try this question. A small installation consists of the following loads connected in parallel across a single phase 240 volt 50Hz supply. A. A fan motor having an output of 1.5 kV amperes at 0.75 power factor lagging. And then B. A 1000 radiator operating at unity power factor. C. A number of fluorescent lamps taking a total load of 1.2 kV amperes at 0.95 PF lagging. Now we are asked to find the total current, the total real power, the total apparent power and the overall power factor of the load. So how do we solve this problem? Now from the question we are being given the supply voltage to be 240 volts. So we have V equals 240 and then we have the frequency to be 50 Hz. Also for A, we are being told that a fan motor is having an output power of 1.5 kV amperes. Now the unit suggests that this power we are talking about is the apparent power because it is measured in volt amperes. Now what you are going to do is, for the information given in A, B and C, we are going to call them 1, 2, 3, in the sense that we have this to be the apparent power for A. So instead of calling that S, we are going to call that S1. And that is equal to 1.5 kV amperes. And also for the power factor, we call that PF1. And that is equal to cosine of angle phi. And that is giving us 0.75. Also for B, we are giving a 1000 watt radiator operating at unity power factor. Now this is also the real power. So we are going to call that P2 and that is 1 kilowatt. And then we have the power factor that is PF2 to be unity. So that is equal to 1. Then we move on to C, a number of fluorescent lamps taking a total load of 1.2 kV amperes. So that is also the apparent power. So we call that S3 and that is equal to 1.2 kV amperes. And then we have the power factor that is PF3 to be equal to 0 0.95 lagging. So we are asked to find I, that is the total current, II, the total real power, III, the total apparent power, and IV, that is the overall power factor of the load. So what we are going to do is, we are first of all going to find the real power and the apparent power, because the information that we need to find the total current is not available. So we need to get those information before we can find the total current. So first of all, let's solve for the real power and the apparent power and then we can move on to find the total current. So let's start from II. So what we are going to do is, we are going to find P1, P2 and then P3 from A, B, C and then we add them up to find the total real power. Now considering the power triangle, we know that the real power is giving us the apparent power times cosine of the angle phi. So from A, we can find the real power that is P1 so that P1 is equal to S1 times cosine of angle phi which is giving us the power factor. So to find P1, that's basically going to be 1.5, that is the value of S1 times cosine of angle phi, that is the power factor. So 0.75 and then when you multiply the two values, you are going to get 1.125 kilowatts. So this is the value of P1. So now let's move on to B. We are going to find the value of P2. So for P2, we are already given the value 
that is one kilowatt so let's just move on to p3 p3 we also have the value of s3 so we just multiply the value of s3 by the power factor so like we did for p1 that is also going to be 1.2 times 0 0.95 and that is also equal to 1.14 so that is 1.14 kilowatt now to find the total real power we are basically going to add p1 p2 and p3 so let's call that pt and that is equal to p1 is 1.125 P2 is 1 and then P3 is 1.14. So when you add these three values, you are going to get 3.265. So this is the total real power. Now let's move on to III where we are going to find the apparent power. So to find the apparent power, we first of all need to find the reactive power that is the total reactive power and then we can use the relation s equals the square root of p square plus q square to find the total apparent power so to find the total reactive power we are also going to find q1 q2 and then q3 and then we add them up So to find K1, first of all, we know that Q is giving us S times sine of the angle phi, that is from the power triangle. And then we know that from trigonometry, sine phi is giving us the square root of 1 minus cos square phi. So we are going to substitute this value in place of sine phi. Therefore, we have Q1 to be equal to the value of S1 is 1.5 times the square root of 1 minus cos square phi. Now, cos phi is giving us 0 0.75. So, cos square phi is 0 0.75 square. So, that's going to be 1 minus 0 0.75 square. And then when you multiply these two values, you are going to get 0 0.992. And this is the reactive power. So measured in volts, amperes, reactive. So kilovolts, amperes, reactive. Now for B, now we have the power factor that is PF2 to be unity, which is 1. Therefore, we have no reactive power for B. So the reactive power that is Q2 is equal to 0. Now to see, we have S to be 1.2 kilovolts amperes, and then we have this to be the power factor. So using this relation here, we also have Q3 equals 1.2 times the square root of 1 minus the square of the power factor and that is also equal to 0 0.375 now to find the total reactive power that is given by q1 plus q2 plus q3 so 0 0.992 plus 0 plus 0 0.375 and that is equal to 1.367 kilovolts amperes reactive so this is the total reactive power so using this formula we can find the total apparent power so that is giving us st equals the square root of pt which is 3.265 square plus qt 1.367 square and that is equal to 
so this is the value of the total apparent power now back to i let's find the total current now we know that the apparent power is giving us the product of the total voltage or the supply voltage and the supply current so if you want to find the total current or the supply current that is going to be it equals st over 20. now we have st to be 3.54 and then divided by vt and then vt was given to be 240 volts so dividing this by 1000 we have 0 0.24 so that we have it to be equal to 14.75 amperes so this is the value of the total current or the supply current now we are going to find iv that is the overall power factor so to find the overall power factor also from the power triangle we know that p is equal to s times cosine of angle phi and then cosine of angle phi is the power factor so if you want to find the overall power factor of the load then we have pt equals st times cos phi so cos phi which is equal to the overall power factor is equal to pt divided by st and then we have pt to be equal to 3.265 so 3.265 divided by st 3.54 So 3.265 divided by 3.54, you have 0 0.9223. Now since the greater part of the circuit is inductive, the overall power factor is going to be 0 0.9223 lagging.